Feel free to check out my tea public after the video and support me on Patreon. Watch till the end of the video for more. This review was made possible thanks to my wonderful patrons. If you'd like to show your support for this channel, then you can go do so on Patreon. Well, you guys wanted it, I think. So let's talk about Red Man. Not, not that one, the other one. Yeah, see this guy right here? Seems like a nice gentleman at first, but in reality, you better hope you don't cross him when you're out and about. Red Man is a 1972 tokusatsu series from Tsuburaya Productions, most famously known for the Ultra series, as well as Mirror Man, Jumborg Ace, and Grid Man. The series consists of 138 shorts that feature Red Man battling monsters recycled from Ultraman like Jiras, Baltan, Gomorrah, and Zatan, as they all make several appearances throughout the show. It was made in a similar vein as Ultra Fight, which was also made up of numerous shorts. Red Man aired on the Ohio Kodomo show during the second monster boom as TV personality Tetsuya Asado, who was dubbed the Monster Uncle, would introduce and explain each episode. But as far as I know, the segments with Tetsuya Asado aren't in any of the home video releases of Red Man, and I can't seem to find them online. But if there's anyone who's an expert on Tsuburaya shows, please correct me if I'm wrong. And because of this, I had to watch some Red Man without Asado's introduction when preparing for this review. So not even I could understand the methods of Red Man's madness myself. Or figure out whether or not his actions were truly justified. I mean, for all I know, these monsters didn't do anything wrong. What could they have possibly done to evoke Red Man's wrath, aside from threatening the lives of many an Ultraman? Maybe this is all just Red Man's sick fantasy. Maybe the show just takes place in his psyche. According to the Ultraman wiki, Red Man is a peace-loving warrior from the planet Red in the Red Nebula. Yeah, he sounds pretty peaceful to me. Also, does he eat Red Baron pizzas? Is his favorite restaurant Red Lobster? How much red do you want, man? While he fights for peace, Red Man is known for his extremely straightforward yet brutal fighting style, and prefers defeating opponents rather than sparing them. Defeating as in just straight up murdering them. Maybe the red on his costume is the blood of his enemies. Yeah, believe it or not, Red Man actually has a lore. According to magazines that were promoting the show, Red Man is a refugee who came to Earth after his home world was destroyed by monsters. So he's pretty much out for blood. He bonds with Officer Sako Mizu of the SIA, like how an Ultraman would, in which he transforms into Red Man whenever a monster would appear. Who is Officer Sako Mizu? What is the SIA? Your best guess is as good as mine, because none of this is mentioned in the show whatsoever, but in magazines. As for the constant reuse of Ultra Kaiju, it's because they keep being revived by the souls of the monsters who destroyed Red Man's home world. Anyway, unlike the other Ultra shows at the time, Red Man was shot on 16mm film as opposed to their standard 35, meaning optical effects weren't exactly possible, and that they had no choice but to make Red Man behave so brutally so that audiences wouldn't get bored. So you mean to tell me that making Red Man a belligerent murder machine was intentional so the little kitties watching at home wouldn't get bored? I'd comment about how sick that is, but one, that's pretty hilarious, and two, Japan is kind of known for treating violence differently than how we do here in Burger Country. I mean, how else did this only last for 183 episodes and receive a comic series by Matt Frank? As for the optical effects, cinematographer Shinichi Ooka did figure something out along the way, but other than that, Red Man just feels like something a bunch of film students would have made. And there's actually a good reason for that. Tsuburaya wasn't seeing a lot of success in the early 70s, so they began making these insanely low-budget productions, such as Ultra Fight and Red Man, so that they wouldn't spend as much money in the long run. And with all that out of the way, let's dive into Red Man. Red to fight! So, back in 2016, Tsuburaya did upload every episode of Red Man on their official YouTube channel at one point, but almost all of them have been taken down. Thankfully, a YouTuber by the name Rangers Writers Robots uploaded a good handful of the series in batches. And because every episode follows the exact same formula, you're not really missing much with these. But let's go through some highlights. <laughs> Ah, 
Ah, so not only is he a murderer, but Red Man hates nature. Come on, man, what would that tree even do to you? Was it in the way? Was it such an inconvenience that he had no choice but to make it explode with your goofy-looking machete? And what about here where you set fire to this bush? Is... Oh my god, are, are you trying to say something, Subaraya? You gotta throw in an Exodus reference in the first episode? So after he beats the monster Dacron, he takes his red arrow, which is just a reused prop from Return of Ultraman, and stabs it through a rock. Sure. Now in this episode, he's duking it out with Black King, and for a merciless monster killer, Red Man kinda sucks at fighting. Put him in the ring with Conor McGregor and see what happens. And he just starts doing cartwheels out of nowhere. Is he just taunting Black King? Oh my god. Poor son of a bitch has no idea what's coming to him. What did he do to provoke this man? And just like my Tinder dates, Red Man has the ability to suddenly disappear. May God help us. Hey, watch the explosives, they can't afford another Red Man suit. This one just opens with Red Man running towards the camera. Like, jeez man, can you be any more unsettling? This guy's probably thinking, oh, what a beautiful day. I sure hope a psychotic serial killer in red spandex doesn't show up out of nowhere and brutally murder me. Wow, not even the music thinks Red Man is much of a hero. Oh, wh where are you running to, Red Man? You got somewhere to hide? Did you hear police sirens in the distance? Are you starting to feel regret for your monstrous actions? This episode literally begins with a monster running away from Red Man. How are we supposed to root for this guy? No, 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 no. I refuse to believe that Kanagon is in this show. I refuse to believe that a child who is cursed into becoming a monster because of his own greed is about to be murdered at the hands of Red Man. I refuse to believe that Red Man is willing to go as far as to kill a literal child. Kanada, don't don't aggravate him any further. It got all. That's it. I'm done. Red Man just killed a child and topped it off with the Nazi salute. That I, I'm done. Had enough of this. I'm, I'm going. I'm going out. I just want to give a very special thank you to all my patrons. You guys are truly the best. And if you want to see more reviews like this, then go support me on Patreon. It's videos like these that really reinforce the opportunity for me to push myself when it comes to producing content for you guys. And I'm happy to announce that the goals for my upcoming Kamen Rider and Rebirth of Mothra reviews have been met during the production of this video. And the next goal is a review for Neon Genesis Evangelion. So if you want to see that, then go support me on Patreon, especially if you want to see your name here. Other than that, feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And this is Titan Goji, signing off.